Hey, and welcome back to the Local 636 Podcast. I'm your host, Ed Akers. Joining me this week is Brian Jackson in a very special episode. Brian is an entrepreneur. He's a coach. He's a motivational speaker, Canada's National Speaker of the Year one year. Uh, more importantly, he's my friend, uh, and he's got a great story, a great story of his life, of hope, of survival, and of thriving. And I can't wait for you guys to hear this. If you haven't heard Brian's story, uh, I am warning you, you might need a Kleenex. There are some sensitive issues in here, uh, but I really hope you enjoy this episode with Brian Jackson. Welcome to the Local 636 Podcast, by the way. I'm here with Brian Jackson today. That's Brian with two R's. Don't mess it up. Brian with two R's. But Jackson's bad normal. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, no one got it's to like, pick. It's like, sorry, Miss Jackson. <laughs> but no one got to pick that. This just kind of is what it is. But Brian is with two R's. There's a reason for that. We don't have to talk about it. But um, let's talk about why you tell people you're Australian. You have an interesting story. So the Local 636 podcast is for interesting people, places, and things in St. Charles. We've had the mayor on. We've had musical artists. We've had business owners. I've had my daughter on. You, I would say, are probably the most interesting person just because of your story. It's a, it's a one of a kind. I've never heard anything like it. Um, thank God. And so if you would just, just tell that I will try. Do we have Kleenexes nearby angel? I'm not kidding. This is, I get wrecked every time you tell this not to build it up too much. I I'm appreciate a, you having me on this uh, podcast. And, uh, I mean, I'll keep it very, you know, brief on the, the backstory. Um, when I was uh, born, I was born to um, a mother who was very caring, but a, a father who was just, um, at first he tried to accuse my mom of cheating on him and just, oh, no, that can't be my son. And then the next moment he's like, oh, man, I really want a son, and we're going to name him Brian Jr. And this is awesome. And... Uh, so February 24th, 1991, I was born a baby. and uh, <laughs> You were born a baby? I was born a baby. That's the first Benjamin step. Benjamin Button style, man. Okay. <laughs> but I was pretty healthy, just had complications with asthma. Um, my dad was overseas and called my mom and was excited that I was born. Um, but fast forward to nine months later, he's in and out of the picture. And uh, I had another asthma. Atta- I had an asthma attack, and I was commi- uh, admitted to the hospital. Uh, my mom tried to get a hold of my dad because that's what parents should care about their kids sure. if they're in the hospital. Like, yeah, that's normal. Uh, you would want your girl. You, if your girls were in the hospital, you'd want to know, right? Yeah, if he, I was at was work or something, you, yep, right? One hundred percent. But when she caught his workplace, they're like, "Oh, I think you got the wrong number." Mr. Stewart doesn't have any kids. Oh, and, I didn't know that part. Well, yeah. Um, so seven days later, I'm about ready to be uh, checked out of the hospital. Uh, my mom, you know, as caring as she was, stayed up like 24 seven, making sure I was getting the right care. Uh, she was actually a respiratory therapist, so um, you know, when I'm having an asthma attack, she kind of knows how to yeah. do that communication with doctors and nurses and. Um, attend to me the way I needed. And out of the blue, uh, my father shows up. Mm. He brings his lab coat in. Nobody asked him about his lab coat. And he's like, oh, I brought this lab coat in. And he's uh, a phlebotomist. He's a phlebotomist. Yeah, which is like a blood. It's like a blood doctor. You know, technician. Okay. The people who draw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, draw, analyze. um Anyway, so he just shows up out of the blue. Nobody asked him about his lab coat. He's just like, oh, I brought this in because I didn't want to get stolen. By the way, this is at uh, the the hospital in uh, Lake St. Louis. Okay. So um, not is... putting a bad rep out there on no. the hospital. It was the 90s. People just. Uh, so, yeah, I guess you can just, you know, walk into it. Used to be a bit of, I, I mean, he worked still there. Can walk into he worked that. there, though, right? Huh? He worked there. Uh no, he worked at a different hospital. Okay. I'm not sure. I need a, like. Well, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's there. 
my mom's like, hey, we're waiting for the discharge papers. Can you stay here and watch um, Brian while you while I go get something to drink? She just wanted some time to herself, right? Yeah. His response was, no, you stay here. Uh, you go get a drink, and I'll stay here and watch your kid. Hmm. I, I think I said that right. Yeah. She was asking him to go get a drink for her. Sure. And his response was, no, you go get a drink. I stay here and watch your kid. That's how it was referred to me. Mm. Your kid. Your kid, yeah. Your kid, not his. Right. And so this is where it was a moment where he took out HIV's tainted blood that he had stolen from his workplace as a phlebotomist and intentionally injected me with the HIV virus, hoping I would die off and he wouldn't have to pay child support. And um, not only was it HIV tainted blood, it was also incompatible blood. So my vital signs are starting to go out of whack. I'm screaming, crying. Doctors and nurses are rushing in, trying to figure out what's going on. We're just about to discharge him. This doesn't look like asthma attack, you know, right? Finally get everything stable. We're able to transfer me to another hospital. But in that moment, I, while I was screaming and crying, my father just left the room. He said, oh, I got to get back to work. Didn't even care about what was going on. And from there, he left our, out of our lives and told my mom, don't worry about looking me up for child support. Your child's not going to live long. Mm. And it wasn't until 1996 when I was diagnosed with full-blown AIDS after not knowing that that had happened. And went from being this happy, playful, energetic five-year-old to this bloated, feverish, sick kid who just, like, how started to climb. Um, I have mood swings. Can I ask a question back to back to that day? And you were nine months old, so obviously you don't have anything to do yeah, with I this. I don't really remember uh, nine months I, old. I guess I'm just curious, and I've heard this story ten times or, or more, um, and it still just hits me. I mean, I just, as a parent, <clears throat> as a human, <clears throat> just can't believe someone would do that. Um, did they not see, like when my kids get a shot, you can see that they've been stuck with a needle Are they just not, they're not even looking for that. So they don't even know to look for that. Is that what it was or? From my understanding, um, I may have misheard this, uh, at his last parole here, I mean, he is admitting that he intentionally injected me, but we don't know if he was just admitting it because he wanted to get out of prison or he admitted it because he actually did it, and that's so. Um, but he just said he did it on the previous the previous site that I already had. Okay, so you were getting a treatment for, yeah. for asthma or something. Man. Uh, okay, I just, uh, I've never wondered that before, but when you said it this time, for some reason I thought, why wouldn't they just check? Not, I mean, it wouldn't have done any good, except they would have known quicker. I don't know, I maybe mean, that would have helped. A, but. Here's another thing. Why, why would they check? I'm right. actually the first person in history to ever be who's known to be intentionally injected with HIV. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, right. I know there's been more since then because I don't know if it's the idea or just, you know, people. There are some people who are just pure evil and want to sure. pass on, like, a suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, they wouldn't look for it because why would, how would they even? Yeah. What, what, what well, would the dad, you know, his dad's here. That's a safe guy. Okay, yeah. You know. Well, it's kind of like, and not, not to steal your story, but you talk about when you do start getting sick at, you know, four or five years old, it's kind of a last ditch effort to be like, well, let's test him for HIV, I guess. Right. Like we've tested him for everything else. Nothing's wrong. Well, the, it, 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 the two things happen, you know, it's like, listen, this is crazy. My mom just had, like, a light bulb moment. What if it's HIV? But she's telling the doctors and nurses, and they're like, ah, no. Nah, and this nah, is, nah, like, nah, 95-ish, nah. so that's it's prevalent. But that same night my mom had that light bulb moment, the, my pediatrician woke up in a sweat from a nightmare, called the hospital, and said, you need to test it for HIV. Wow. Both events happened at the same time. Then that's when they tested me. Wow. And realized I was HIV positive. Well, sorry, I was actually diagnosed with full blown AIDS. Like my T cell count was at zero. What is the difference? I mean, between HIV positive and having 
AIDS. The difference between HIV and AIDS is that um, uh, what well, you have to understand what HIV is, is there's only four fluids that can transmit it, blood, semen, vaginal fluid, and breast milk. Um, and it has to be a contact on contact. So like when my dad did it, he directly inserted it into uh, me. And then once HIV comes into the body, it starts attaching the T cells. And then it turns that T cell into a factory and replicates itself. Okay. So your T cells, so you have a T cell count. And your T cells count, that's your immune system, your, your natural fight. You get a cold, great, right? Mm. Um, so as the HIV virus is replicating, it starts destroying your T cell count. And then when your T cell count gets below 200, you become diagnosed with AIDS. So it's more of a, like a, like okay. a stage four cancer, like you're moving up a stage. Okay. So AIDS is like, and AIDS in the nineties was like a death sentence. Correct. My uncle actually passed away of AIDS in the, in the nineties. And, uh, and it was, yeah. Um, you know, there's just so much misconceptions about it, which we, we can talk about later. Um, but that's, that's the difference. And so uh, people don't die. Uh, so there's a misconception. People, oh, he died, you know, from AIDS. But what we, AIDS is like the stepping stone of why we die. Like Yeah, you die from the infection that you get while so you, you have AIDS or something. you die from the opportunistic infections. Yeah. Like Freddie Mercury from, mm -hmm. from Queen. He yeah. Had, he had Band-Aids. That was a joke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, did you catch that? <laughs> Band that was a very interesting yeah. joke. Yeah. I, I've got to remember that now for the yeah. next one. Yeah. Well, you can't tell that joke. He can <laughs> he tell that tell joke. That you joke. can't tell you that joke, know. and I can't tell that right. joke. Right, exactly. No. Okay. Uh, anyways, <laughs> he had pneumonia, and his body couldn't fight off that pneumonia, so therefore he gotcha. passed away. Okay. And so in my situation, I had three opportunistic infection. Um, and they put me on 23 oil medications, three IV antibiotics, and two injections daily. And it was pretty much just a good luck. Most of those medications weren't available to children. Mm -hmm. um, most of them weren't covered by insurance. So my mom was maxing out credit cards. We kind of, li we lived, or you didn't kind of, we lived in poverty, not really knowing where we we're going to get total paper, mm -hmm. just to afford um, the care that was provided for me. Because it's just, um, HIV medicines are expensive. Sure. I imagine. Um, I, I, mean, I, I think the one that I'm on now is like six grand a month. Wow. If I paid like directly out of pocket. So yeah. Thank God for insurance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was my, my reality. They finally said, um, we're going to give them five months to live. Sent me home to die with no hope. And here you are. You're a miracle, man. I mean, you know what? We don't have to get into all the everything else that happened, but fast forward, you're what? You got to be thirty one because you said ninety one. I'm right? almost thirty two. February 24th. almost thirty two. Okay, February twenty four. There comes a point where you're gonna stop. You're gonna go. Yeah, I'm thirty one. Like you don't. You're not gonna be like I'm almost this age. <laughs> Why don't we just say like I'm over twenties, right? <laughs> you like, are over twenty. Make us sound yes. young, but you know. Yeah. So so fast forward to now, you are undetectable. I'm undetectable, which means. The virus has been suppressed, yeah. and the T cell count is at an all time high, giving a zero percent chance to pass it on the virus. So, undetectable is like a huge breakthrough in the uh, HIV community. Yeah. Um, to where medications help us live longer, control the virus. And once the virus is under control, the transmission rate is like zero. That's awesome. So, it's super, you know, safe, you know, and. And the best out there is old myth. You can't get HIV through, you know, a toilet seat, hugging, you know, kissing. Right. Well, um, and I, as I mentioned, my, my uncle did pass away of AIDS in, I think, 1996. And you're right. I mean, when you got AIDS then, you died. I mean, that's there wasn't there wasn't a making it through. Like, that just didn't happen. And I remember I was, I was young, but I remember the medication being expensive. And I remember how that went. And it was it was brutal. Um but here you are, man. You you have you've thrived. You've not only survived, but you are thriving. Um, and going back to the beginning, the Australian accent is because one of the medications left you legally deaf. Well, yeah, legally deaf. I mean, I got a you know a stamp on my driver's license. 
I mean, I've been pulled over a couple of times, and the officer thought I was drunk. Um, <laughs> or not from around here, and it's just like, uh, no, I'm, I'm deaf. And they're like, oh, okay. Send the license. <laughs> and Whatever the you want. Registration back and just like, oh, right. Just go. Just be safe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so not Australian. Not Australian. Not not French. Not English. I get like all the European countries. Yeah. And then like Australia. <laughs> I've even got South America. South I mean, America. So, not South, South Africa. But <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't sound Portuguese or. <laughs> no. Uh, Latino, right? Yeah. Like, but, but I, I guess, I, I mean, it, it's incredible. And, and like I said, I can't, I can't, how can you even imagine doing that? But I don't want to dwell on that, but let's talk about the person you are, what you've done with that, um, and what you're doing today. I mean, so you've been, I, I'm sure you know the number, but you've been on countless I was watching YouTube clips of you earlier. You've been on the show, The Doctors. You got some sort of award from Nick Cannon. Uh, the Halo Award. Man. The Halo Award. Was that a Nickelodeon thing? It was. It was. Uh, uh, yeah, it was a Nickelodeon thing. Nickelodeon, Teen Nick, something like that. Now, did he get you pregnant? Then he, he did not. Funny story, right? Okay. I met Nick Cannon, and my my sister lives out in uh, California. Okay. And uh, runs a daycare. Okay. Guess who came to the daycare? With Guess his, who she met? With his 12 kids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, did she make the connection? I mean, was it like... She, she she sent me a text, guess who I met today? Yeah. And then I was just like, daycare, kids in Hollywood. <laughs> the canon. Because <laughs> I've met lots of celebrities, but there's only one who's having lots of kids. Yeah. There's like a 1% chance, you know, or 10% chance it's him anyway if they if you go into a daycare. So, But you've you've traveled the globe is that fair to say to speak? That's fair. Um, you've you've got an organization called Hope is Vital, and you're wearing the gear, and I I'm love it. The gear. I didn't wear my my Hope shirt today because I knew you'd be wearing it, and I didn't want to clash with you. But uh, I thought you were gonna wear a local six three six shirt. And you know, I think I we've got wear a Hope is Vital shirt. Yeah, and then like halfway through, it's like, hey, you gonna switch? Just swap shirts, shirts, and then we swap shirts. But then you don't show us like changing and yeah. nipples and all that because we gotta keep it, you know. PG thirteen or yeah, I don't know. Now because I don't I think anyone book. wants to see either but, of us um, do that anyway. And then the rest of the show, we're just wearing each other's gear, you know. <laughs> Every segment it flips back. We're we're just wearing it. No, I we we have some good branding here, thanks to Angel and the team. So I just wear what I what I wear from the day. But um, I think what what's so great is you've turned a death sentence into just an amazing life. I would say. I mean, talk about that. Like, how how do you do that? I mean, you 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 of all people would be the easiest to just be like, I'm done. Like, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm alive. I'm gonna just just live off this subsidy or whatever, and I'm just gonna take all the handouts that I get, and I'm just gonna do whatever. But you haven't done that. I mean, you've like I said, you've not only survived, but you have thrived and are thriving. Yeah. Well, thank you for consider me thriving, and uh, <laughs> um. You know, like, uh, it, there's been a consistency balance between surviving and thriving, right? And uh, sure. right now I'm dealing with another uh, immunocompromised issue, right? And so I'm kind of going through, you know, surviving and thriving again, like on the, but, um, you know, throughout my life, like, uh, I just want to, like, backtrack. There was a time that I was done, and that was when I was getting bullied in school, and um, nobody was standing up for me, so I had to start standing up for myself. Mm. And I would get kicked out of school. Other kids would get detention. You know, they would call me AIDS boy, gay boy, freak. Um, if they weren't making fun of me before being HIV, AIDS positive, then they would be making fun of my healing, right? And mm -hmm. so um, finally, seventh grade year, my principal called me into the office and he said uh after i got in a fight and said you're not coming to school here next year you're the problem child and then he explained to me what the problem child is is um if you just weren't here there wouldn't be a problem mm. and so I, I took that i was like i'm the problem yeah if i and weren't so I here got the idea yeah. that if i'm the problem i gotta get rid of it 
Mm. And so one night I had three knives in front of me and I asked myself, which one can cut deeper? But in that moment of desperation, this voice caught me to pick up a Bible. And I read, why so downcast, oh my soul, put your hope in God. And that word hope stuck out to me. And I was just like, what is this hope? And uh, we, I couldn't just go Google what hope is. It's 2002, three, mm-hmm. maybe one. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't keep track of my age sure. or the years. <laughs> Clearly. Um, I just know it happened. <laughs> um, but we had dialed up internet, right? So it's just like, oh, well, I can't. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, you know. I'm going to put this off. I'm going to do some, you know, soul searching, or you can say it's like a eat, hope, love situation. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just, you know, my, my mind just started opening up to positivity as I, as I look for hope. And what I found is that in life, we're, we, we're born, carried into this world, and then we, we crawl and we take baby steps, and before you know it, we're running and then we're taking leaps of faith. But what guarantees us we can make those leaps? Or if we fall short, we can get back up. And that's hope. And hope is vital. And I also realized that when I was going through this situation, there was two questions I was asking. Why is this happening to me? And what can I get out of it? But through the lens of hope, you can rearrange this question into why not me? And it's not about what you can get. It's about what you can give. And that it's just a breakthrough. Like, why is, why is this happening to me? To why not me? It's that we, everybody has a story. And everybody goes through hardship. But the blessing is, is that you get to share that hardship to, in the hopes that other people don't have to suffer as much as you have. Um... I always tell people, before Justin Bieber said this in a song, right? I'm still waiting on some royalty check, but I always said the grass isn't going on the other side of the fence. It's going away. You water it. Okay. And he put that in a song. You're saying that you came up with that? I, I came up with that. I don't know, man. I'm, I, I'm trying to find it on Twitter where I said it like way before that song was released. Yeah. But, man, I've been, I've been rolling with that. Anyways. I feel like I've said that before. And you I said that before? I mean, I feel like that's but like a thing. You've known me a long time, so I might have, I have dropped it on a dime, and then you're just like, "That's possible. It could have been. It could have been planted somehow." You know what? I I can test uh, that I have said, and I I actually do have proof of this. Um, when Kobe Bryant passed away, the the hashtag Girl Dad kind of took off, and I was like, "I know that I've said that before. I have two little girls," and I went back on Facebook, and I love Kobe. It's not it's not an anti Kobe thing, but I went back on Facebook and found where I had hashtagged girl dad, you know, years before that was popular. So I kind of feel where you're coming from on that. I mean, yeah. let's, let's get paid, right? Yeah. Let's what get, can I let's get? get paid. What can I get? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, nah, man. Um, I threw you off. I don't know what we were talking about. We, we were talking about what, what you just talked about getting stuff and i just said <laughs> i just threw down it's not what about what you can get in life it's about what you can well, get no, that's why which i, I know that. is like a huge like aspect of who you are and i think it's like uh, i mean we first bonded over music right yeah you we have an erroneous story that i'll let you tell but i don't believe it's I accurate i love telling the story of vision because you're such a huge part of vision leadership st charles so it's the only place I get to tell that story. You could tell it here. So we're at church, right? I uh, Summit Community, you still go there? Uh, we don't. You don't? We okay, don't. that's cool. Yeah. But it was at Summit Community, <laughs> and um, they didn't have a college group. Right. And I was, like, in that weird transition of, like... You were 19, maybe, or... 19, 20. Yeah, which means I was th- 29 or 30. Oh, cool. And I was... So work- you're my age. That's, that's crazy. Right. Um, yeah, and I was working with the youth group. Um, you just are like asking me, we were talking about, you know, bands we like. And I, I probably mentioned like. It was a day to remember, I think. Like wasn't Fall That Boy. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I just mentioned I like pop punk and I like yeah. Screamo, like The Devil Was Prada. And uh, funny story, that remind me of a funny story that you appreciate on The Devil Was Prada. Okay. Um, like the band, not, not the movie. Yes. The band, not the me, but the reptile. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Anyway, so you're just like, uh, I forget the song. I forget the band. I think it was a day to remember, wasn't it? No, it wasn't a day to remember. Maybe it was a day to remember. I don't know. Okay. But anyway, so you just invited me out to your car. To, and my, like, we're on your, like, I don't, did you have an iPod shuffle? Or probably. Did you have, like, the, like the real deal? I, uh, probably a shuffle. Probably a shuffle. Oh, it had a screen on it. It has but, okay, then that's not a shuffle. That's like the real deal. Yeah, but it was a mini or something. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, we were just like, you know, and I was just like, mind but open. But the funny part of your story, though, is what is you kind of gloss over it is where you're like, hey, ke- hey, kid, come to my car. <laughs> come sit in my car and listen to music <laughs> with I'm me. I'm 39, so I remember <laughs> when I like. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think it was weird in the moment, but that is how we met. I mean, and that's you know, yeah, you're like, hey, come, come to my car. <laughs> you don't know me well, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know you. Uh, uh, but from there, we 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 hit it off, and uh, you know, you've uh, advocated for me to come speak at Vision St. Charles County Leadership, which is a great program, uh, and. Uh, was a speaker there for many years. And then this year I got accepted into the program. So I'm seeing the program on the other side. And, mm-hmm. um, did you speak to your own class? No, I didn't. Okay. I really wanted to. Yeah. That's a thing that happens, but I think it's maybe, I mean, my other classmates have like participated in like the, Oh, have the they? And I'm just like, huh? Well, I, We're tired I, of your I, story. I, but I was just like, <laughs> you know what? Like, this is my time to just, yeah. you know, they, uh, my goal is to just soak up all the information. I wanted to know how how things actually work in St. Charles County. Yeah. That's a great program to figure mm-hmm. that out. Absolutely. Especially with the dreams of running for a public office. Is that your dream? Uh, yeah. In two what? years, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I might be ready to run. Two years from now? Two years from now. Mark Next it. election. So let's let's talk about that. So, like, what, what have you been doing and what are – I didn't know you had political aspirations, but, like – what do you do now? Like, you public speak. You have Hope is Vital. Like, So I do, I do motivation of speaking. I do uh, life coaching. Um, and then I run the T-shirt uh, company, hopeisvital.co, which we just we make awesome designs. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. That's cool. And hopes to inspire and uh, remind people when they look in the mirror that there's hope or, you know, out in the, when they're out in the world. There's hope on their shit, and like people see that, and they're like, "Oh yeah, man, hope." Right? Yeah. So the whole thing is to spread hope. But the cool, the cooler thing about the organization is, ten percent of all of our profits go back to the community. And so this particular shirt, you know, it says a uh, nine eight eight lifeline. We we're raising money for uh, suicide awareness. Say so that's the suicide prevention yeah. number. Yeah, it's the new. It's like the nine one one for mental health. Right. And people need another nine eight eight. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And we can include uh links for that. Or That's if great. they you know need uh if, if anybody's struggling with you know, suicide or needs mental health help, there's no shame in that. Um but I would also besides the nine eight eight lifeline, I would reach out to Compass Health, which is another great program in uh St. Charles County. Let's talk about St. Charles. Uh, I think it's so interesting that you have been all over. You were Canada's n- National Speaker of the Year one year. Is that right? <laughs> what was the deal? What? I was COCA is the organization, but I was Canada's Speaker of the Year. You were Canada's Speaker of the Year, which but means not, what? But it wasn't recognized by JT. Not, not JT. The, not to Justin Timberlake, but the, the can, America's hat, JT. That Justin Trubilee, I Justin Thoreau? Justin Thoreau. The actor? No, not Justin Thoreau. I'm so confused right now. What's happening? Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying the prime minister of Canada. Oh. Gave it, to me. it was an organization <laughs> okay. in Canada. But why? 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 You, why? Why? Like, well, you're not Canadian. Sorry because, to break it to you. <laughs> because, like, well, why, does, why do Americans win the Stanley Cup? They're not Canadian. Yeah, but they play... But they play for a team. I, that's not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, who were you up against? Was it other? I was up against several other speakers. And okay, had you spoken in Canada that year? Um, that particular time of my life, I was in and out of Canada. Like, it okay, was, it was it was awesome. Like, 
everybody there was just so uh, so friendly, sure. you know, welcoming. You can bump in, literally. I mean, this is probably like an overplayed thing, but you can bump into someone in Canada, literally, and they will say, sorry. I mean, it's happened to me. It's happened to me. It's happened to you? It's happened to me. Okay. They're, they're so nice, and they're so, it's too nice. Uh, probably I mean, why they're you got, the most generous, and they, yeah. they pay well. Yeah. <laughs> They're not listening. It's okay. <laughs> are you are you up for a speaker of the I year? The, uh, I got like that. We're gonna pay it in the Canadian dollars. We're gonna get podcast of the year in Canada. That's when you know you've hit it. <laughs> Local six three six, Canada's podcast. You heard it here first. All right, it's political aspirations. What do you want to do? I mean, you want to be like a city council person? Do you want to be a mayor? Or are we talking national or state level, local level? What? I mean, I've always wanted to go national because when I was thirteen. Um, I used to advocate for uh, Ryan White funding, which is uh, the the Ryan White Care Act. It, it passed, you know, back in the '90s. Okay, and it just said states have to have a, some funds to help people with HIV with medication. Right? Sure. Um, in some states, they have wait lists, so a hundred people get access to that care, but then you know, screw the other two hundred, three thousand people who are on that, right? Right. So it was out of whack, and we just wanted to consistency, making sure it was funded. So I got to meet, you know, um, congressmen, senators, uh, invited to speak by Ted Kennedy. Wow. Um, I was also uh, invited to speak one time uh, by this uh, guy named Barack Obama. Okay. Um, but he wasn't, like, the Barack Obama yet. You just some oh, guy, yeah. You know, and you did it. You, I did, yeah. Yeah. So you met so him I've, before. I've, I've, given, I've given three congressional briefings before the age of eighteen. Wow, that's yeah. cool. And so, where's your where's your starting point for that? I mean, are you going to start? Certainly, you would start local, I, right? I want to start at the Senate level. Is okay. the one that I'm I'm eyeing right now. Um, there's some, um, in all honesty, like there's um, things that I have to you know, way and stuff. You sure. Know. Uh, health is a time, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a fiance, get married, you know, uh, when you go into politics, you really want, actually when you, when you're an entrepreneur, you, you really want your spouse, or your significant other to be your biggest supporter because if they're not like, it's gonna, right. And I, and I learned that through, you know, a couple of people um, who have been in the, in, in the political realm. Yeah. Um, but then I related that back to like business and stuff, you know, like my, my fiance, um, super blessing, like is a hundred percent behind, um, everything I do. And, um, but she hasn't gotten another political <laughs> train yet. So hopefully I, I told you you have two years to decide. Yeah. I'm in college right now to finish my degree. In Are organization you? Lead, in organizational leadership. Okay. And I'm on track to graduate right around the time I have to start knocking on doors. Okay. And, um, and, uh, kissing hands and shaking babies and. Yeah, whatever. Flippy flop. I think I went down this path and we got distracted and that's okay. But tell me why, like, why, why you come back to St. Charles? Why do you live here? You've been all over. Um, I think the Canada thing derailed us, but you've been all over. You've traveled all over. You've done all these amazing things you've seen all over the country all over the world why here and it's it's a nice place to call home yeah like i i mean there's like i'm a history buff right so it's just like there's just so much history in this culture to learn you know we live in the first state capital to you know we um, St. Louis kind of takes out the, the credit for Lewis and Clark, but now I mean, those boys were here yeah. when they took off, right? Yeah. Um, and it just, this doesn't sound really cheesy, but it's just, it's just a homey place. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's hard to describe. And I, and I have been all over the world. Well, and but there's just no place like it. The only thing that's bad about it is just the increase of property taxes. But that, well, get in the <laughs> politics and you can do something about that, right? 
But I know what you're saying. I mean, it's, it is hard to describe when a place, when something <laughs> just feels right or feels like you should be in this place or whatever. I mean, you know, you mentioned the, the nightmare that your doctor had and the light bulb that your mom had. It's like, where did that come from? Right. It's just, it's sometimes it's just a feeling and sometimes you just know, like, this is where I'm supposed to be, or this is what I'm supposed to be doing or whatever. So that's, that's what St. Charles is to you. And that's cool. Yeah. So, I mean, I was, you know, I, unfortunately I wasn't born here, but I was raised here. And, um, now I, I, I lived in a St. Charles unincorporated St. Charles kind of right by Ginghams. Mm -hmm. Right. So used to walk up the Ginghams and get some grub with friends or, uh, uh, during during the summer, we would walk up the Ginghams and eat there, or we would walk to this like cigarette store that was right by the uh, um, the convention center, uh -huh. and we buy like sodas there, candy there, right? Okay. And just um, so it, it, it was a it was a great place. And uh, before that, we actually lived in St. Peter's. Okay, and so um, now I'm back in St. Peter's, and um, it's just. I just encourage that yeah. they just And your fiance's here and her family's here, I assume. And they they were North County people. Okay. And I, I, I converted hey, them. I was too. You got converted too. Yep. It's just it's just it's a natural Yeah. It's a progression. Conversion. Moving west. Yeah. And you have a wedding date? We do not have a wedding date. Okay. But here, here's a weird challenge that I had. I was talking about, what if we created a local six three six wedding? Okay. If you guys have, if anybody who's listening to this has like wedding stuff, we're looking for an outdoor venue. Okay. Um, but if we can make it like all St. Charles, so all local. And by that you mean like St. Charles vent using catering and using all stuff from St. Charles. Yeah. Do you want to get married in St. Charles? Maybe. I, I would love to get married yeah. in St. Charles. So we're looking for like a wedding venue sponsor. Once you look, once you look in there, and give you your sponsor. give your best pitch to for why for why someone would. I need a wedding venue sponsor outdoor, please. I I, I would happily do it in like a parking lot if we could get some like tents. So if there's a, a tent person, if you got this hint, you could we'll host the tent. the 2015 Canada National Speaker of the Year. Just think about that. They could put that on their resume, right? I, I can put that on there. You know what else I have on my resume? resume? What's that? Uh, fire walker. I can walk on fire. Like on the coals? Yeah, I have no fear. I have no feeling in the bottom of my foot because I once burned it on hot coal. Okay. So you can walk on hot coals because you burned your foot on hot coals. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but well. I put fire walker on my resume. <laughs> Do people question that? They're like, what is this? Yeah. All right. So what are you listening to now? Oh, uh, man. I got like. Two stars and emo, screamo. Okay, just a playlist, repeat. old school, yeah. Like, um, and then somehow, I I think, was it last year or the, the year before that you introduced me to Dashboard Confessional? And I was just like, I can't believe how, you hadn't how did I heard not? of them. Yeah, that, that blew my mind, too. So you've been on a kick. I mean, because they have a, a long discography and... Um, are you working your way through all their stuff, or what are you doing with them? Kind of more just listening to his greatest hit. I okay, yeah. I mean, Nothing wrong with that. Hands, hands down, man. Hands down. It's it's amazing. Yeah. Have you seen them in concert yet? I have not seen them in concert. Okay. We've been to a couple of concerts together. Yeah, a couple of Warp Tours. Well, we were, we didn't go together, but we yeah. were there. We were there. Warp but, Tour. Yeah, Warp Tour. Um, what else? We were seeing, like. I don't even really remember. I, I remember like finger. I don't even know if it was Point Fest or Warp Tour. I get them like mixed up now. It was Warp Tour. Uh, if I was there, yeah. We got that Coheed in Cambria. Maybe. I like them. Could be. Mayday Parade. Sure. <laughs> I've seen all those bands. I, I, don't I know. listen to like anything, man. Like okay. I just like. I like, yeah. you know, different. Types of music like I, I like classics like Sam Cooke's. Yeah, like if you go through Sam Cooke's discography, like that's it's incredible. You. Now you've told me at one point because you are hard of hearing. Do you are you feeling the music more than you're hearing it, or how do you intake music? So I don't understand lyrics. Okay. So this is this is this is 
very interesting. Not all the time can I hear the lyrics, right? And that, that's what, one of the reasons I like like just screamo and stuff is yeah. you, you, don't understand. you can't understand it Like anyway. dogs can grow beards all over it. Like, yeah. You don't really know <laughs> what they're saying. They're yeah. Like, blah, 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 blah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I still need to tell you that Devil Wears Prada What is story. dogs can grow beards? Is that a Devil Wears Prada line? Um, but basically I like creating my own lyrics to it. And I just like the the other part. I appreciate the other parts of the song instead of the lyrics. Um, okay. Um, you can hear the you can hear the you can hear the words like you can hear the singer. I know they're singing, making the words. Okay. But I don't know what the author's saying. Okay. But then here's the crazy thing: I go on, I go and look at the lyrics, right? Mm-hmm. And I read, I read the song, right? Yeah. And then oh, yeah, I read. Once and then boom, it clicks what they say. Then you know it, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting with um, Dashboard Confessional because they're very lyric based. Yeah. I mean, the music is good, but it's a very much like him telling a story, you know, and even even some songs are, it's overlapping or it goes into another song, you know, where that story continues. So, like, the lyrics are very important um, to me in, in Dashboard Confessional. So, now, and what about like feeling it? Is there something that happens there? Like, do you feel it more, like the bass, like if you're at a live concert? Oh yeah, that that live concert. Like, uh, I mean, I don't go anymore because like it messes with my anxiety now. Okay, it's weird. Like just live music, man. But then, then it's weird because I have like the stereo system at home, right? Um, it's an old old setup, like old school, like big big speakers, not mm-hmm. like a samba, right? Mm-hmm. Big speakers. Yeah. And there's like three stacks. There's like a CD player with like all the CDs I got and. I think there might be a tape player on that. I don't okay. know. But anyways, I also have a record player, right, attached to it. But I just put music on and just, like, blast it. Because I'm lucky enough to live in a neighborhood where you can't wave at your neighbor from, like, the window. Yeah. But we're so we're spread you can turn up a little louder. So I can be as loud as I want. Yeah. And then I just sit there and just have, like, a listening party and just, like, feel, mm. I feel that. Yeah, the music, the bass, melody, like yeah, very cool. Anything you want to plug? Anything coming up? I mean, that you want to plug or talk about? Or I want to tell you the Devil Wears Prada story because okay. it relates to speaking. You right? want that to be on the podcast? I want this to be on the clearly. podcast. So this is going to be special. We will not edit this out. Okay, special for the podcast. We okay. built this up so much. Okay, let me let me give a little background because people are like Devil Wears Prada, Anne Hathaway, Meryl Streep. Was Meryl Streep? And Hathaway, Somebody, for sure. Yeah, I can remember. Okay, that. so that is based on a book called The Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. The band is also based on the same book. Actually, is in existence before the movie, but it's it's this idea that um, for the band, at least, because they are a Christian band, or they at least started that way, right? The Devil Wears Prada. Yeah, re- remember there was like that huge thing of like everybody saying they were a Christian. Yes, band, people and cashed then it in broke, on it. Like everybody was faking it just to. Yeah. Get that market in there. So we don't know, but they definitely had some songs that were, that yeah. leaned to be like. They had, they had some, they had some bops, man. Yeah. But anyway, that's the band name, Devil Wars Prada. They're very heavy. They're a metal band now. They're still around. They're still putting out albums. They're still very popular. So go ahead. Devil Wars Prada. Okay. So they, one of the teas that they, they sold mm-hmm. was that it says the Devil Wars Prada and had Reptile. And yeah. I don't know how they got the license to use Reptile, but that's incredible. Yeah, now I know that song, but what is is that from something? Uh, Rep- Reptile is from like... Uh, King of the Ooze is the song, Reptile King of the oh, Ooze. Oh, man. Rugrats. Ah, uh, okay. Um, anyway, so in the story, uh, along with, you know, speaking, um, my, my faith is really important. So... At this camp I went to for families infected with HIV, they asked me to give a sermon. And so we are in this, like, church. I go up to the podium. I didn't really have churchy clothes to wear. And so I'm wearing the Devil Wears Prada shirt. I give this whole sermon of how, like, you know, about, about hope, you know, God and faith. But the whole time... The podium was black, and then you could just see the devil, the giver, <laughs> <laughs> and there's a big dinosaur on it. <laughs> With the uh, dinosaur like just peeking up a little. So bit. from then on, you maybe chosen your wardrobe a little more carefully. Right. 
Is that what we can say? Right. Okay. But now I got my now I got my own faith. That there I you go. Have. There you go. And now you can just see hope if I'm stuck here. I also don't use podiums anymore. Okay. I've learned that they're they're nuance. Yeah. Like Nuisance. they're just weird. Yeah. Like, yeah. To stand behind it and yeah. Feels like you're like shielding yourself from the audience, and I like to connect with the audience. I like to get. Oh, I almost try to get like you can't really get one on one sure with an audience, but that's my like goal is to yeah. have each audience member feel like they're getting a one on one. Yeah. Now it's a challenger as the audiences grow, which I think like the li- the largest crowd I've spoke was over like six thousand people. Wow. At a Christian conference. Yeah. Um, but I mean, my favorite is one on one. This is your favorite. Just my favorite, right? It's just personal. I like yeah. I, I like intimacy. Um, so that's why I kind of went from speaking to coaching. It felt like a natural progression of taking what I'm teaching on the stage, but teach it even deeper. One-on-one. Inform it, yeah. Gotcha. Um, so I got, you know, um, since the pandemic, speaking's been really hard and stuff, but um, I what I've been doing is just doing, you know, podcasts and interviews and, um, little YouTube shows and stuff here, and that that's fun. Yeah, uh, here here's what's annoying, right? Somebody may have you ever seen those like Instagram posts where there's like it's just like black and white, and they put this like awful picture of me on there, and then they spell my name wrong and talk about the whole story, um, about how. <laughs> I was in jail. And it gets like shit. It gets like millions of views. Huh. I haven't but they don't it. tag me. Yeah. And they keep on sharing. They keep, my story <laughs> keeps on sharing, right? Yeah. And people are getting all this credit. And I'm over here and I'm not like even hidden like, like 10,000 followers. Yeah. <laughs> I got AIDS. <laughs> Which is fine. Happening? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm glad my story is getting out there because here's what's really cool. People in Iraq and Iran... Um, keep on hearing this podcast that I did like four or five years ago. And they're like reaching out to me and they're like, oh, I just found your podcast. I found your story. And and I love that. You know, like I, yeah. I don't really need, you know, Monte Valor credit. I just love that the story of hope is, is being told to people and it's changing lives. And another thing with like over uh, with the fathers in the Middle East, like they were reaching out to me to help be their voice for all the, you know, women who are being killed over, um, wow. you know, their, their rights. And I just like, I'm not, well, one, I'm a, I'm a man and I'm American. <laughs> what can I really do? But I mean, I, just, I, I posted, you know, but yeah. I used my platform to say like, Hey, just let women be woman. Like, yeah. just, just lay off. Yeah. Lay off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, man, I mean, that's that's why I wanted to have to have you on, and thanks for coming on. But it's just, you know, an amazing story, obviously. But it's not, it's not what happened to you; it's what you're doing with it. So, and man, I just appreciate you, and I appreciate your friendship. And uh, thanks for coming on, brother. Oh, uh, thank you. Love you, man. Mm-hmm.